Previously on Sailing Terrapin, we sailed to the beautiful island of Bonaire, paddleboarded with Kala, and did a lot of diving. This is Bonaire, off the coast of Venezuela. As we all know, the trade winds come off the coast of Africa across the Eastern Caribbean from the east. If we were to leave Bonaire and sail to say Puerto Rico or the Eastern Caribbean, we would be straight into the trade winds. Nobody wants to do that. Your other options are to go west, Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama, or in our case, we wanted to go back to the US. So you can go through the Windward Passage up through the Bahamas and then make your way to the coast of the US, the eastern coast of the US. Keeping in mind that the Windward Passage and the Mona Passage have winds that funnel th from the east down through these passages and could become treacherous if the winds accelerate as they go through the Windward and the Mona. So what we wanted to do was sail to a small island off the coast of Haiti called Ilavash and wait for the weather window to go through the windward and end up in the Bahamas. So our passage from Bonaire to Haiti was going to be 547 miles and take about five days. From there, our passage from Haiti to the Bahamas was going to be about 428 miles and take about four days. So we just left uh, Bonaire, unfortunately. It's kind of a sad departure. We had a lot of friends here, and we had some incredible diving. It was kind of the first place we saw sailboats, and, uh, people living on sailboats and diving from sailboats. So it's always been a special place to us and a place we wanted to return to. So it was a wonderful visit, but like all things in the cruising world, it's time to go, and we're off to the Bahamas. But first, we're going to have to stop in the Bosch 80 uh, to wait some weather out while we can then get, go through the uh, Windward Passage. So, off to Lavash. So it's uh, day two on our passage from Bonaire to Haiti, and it's about six o'clock p.m. and we're just making dinner and some tasty macaroni and cheese. And it's um, nice outside. We've been making good progress, averaging between six and a half and eight knots. This is what it looks like out here.
kind of an exciting morning at 3 a.m. It was raining a little bit and um, it was really hot and then the wind went up to 20 knots and we just had a full head sole out and so I said maybe we should reef. Baxter said sure let's go reef. So we came up and before we could reef wind went up to like 35 knots so we're trying to get this full head sole in and it's pouring rain and it wasn't a squall. It was uh, like that for about two hours. And um, the groups had said it was gonna gust, but you know, to about 18, so. So anyway, we are only 30 miles away from Haiti and we had to jive because the wind is kind of being twitchy as it is on your last 40 miles of a 500 mile passage. And um, hopefully the sun comes out, the trades normalize, we'll drive one more time, and then we will be in Il Abash. After a 550 mile passage in four and a half days, we arrived on Ilovash. The protection from wind and waves seemed to be great, the holding was good, but unfortunately we didn't feel safe in this anchorage. We thought coming to Ilovash we would be spared the concerns that normally would be there if we were in Port-au-Prince or mainland Haiti, but we still woke up every day worried about what was going to happen. And so we felt like instead of waiting for the perfect weather window, that we would take our chances. We would slowly motor up through the Windward Passage, stay in the shadow of Hispaniola until it was right to go through the Windward and up to the Bahamas. So that's what we did. So what's going on? So we had to run the engine for 24 hours and we had a small issue where this hose that comes off the heat exchanger wound up, it was zip tied to our intake and it wound up, uh, the zip tie wound up melting and allowed the hose to lean against the muffler and start smoking and we almost had a fire in here. And so what we just did was we're able to put another zip tie on, in a different spot and then it, that'll probably fail. I'm gonna take that off. That was just to hold it. Used a hose clamp around a couple of pieces of duct tape to reinforce the, the tubing and then we used some seizing wire and we pulled it up to the lifting shackle right here, um, which ought to help pull the hose away from the muffler more. And additionally, we uh, added a couple of pieces of duct tape and a couple of pieces of uh, metallic tape back there to kind of reinforce the, the hose that was partially melted. So hopefully we won't have any uh, big issues with the engine. Thankfully, the wind just filled in. Lucky enough. So we're trying to go up to the Bahamas through the Windward Passage here. This is Cuba, this is Haiti, this is us. But we can't make this turn until midnight because the wind is too strong. Wind and waves are pretty strong through there right now. So at midnight, we'll make our turn and then merge northwest. That's the plan, hopefully. So hopefully we won't need the engine anytime soon.
6 a.m. on Tuesday, April 9th, and we just are um, going past the south end of the Acklands Islands in the Bahamas. It's a passage called Mira Por Vos Passage, meaning, Spanish named it um, that meaning uh, save yourself. And as we're going through, there's a cruise ship that's also going through, and the sun's coming up. Baxter's fixing, fixing a knock in the radar pole. There's the cruise ship. He's about a mile and a half. We have uh, lots of traffic, but he's the only one going through the cut with us. following seas. Beautiful morning in the Bahamas. It's always a great day and you can fly the spinnaker. Next, on Sailing Terrapin, we enjoy one of our favorite places on the planet, the Bahamas. 